Hi, I'm Jason, and you're continuing to watch our uh, the Backroom Podcast coverage of Emerald City 2010, and I'm here with Chris Robertson. You did it right. I did. Awesome. awesome. And uh, I guess most recently, uh, writing the uh, Fable Town mini for uh, within the uh, Fable series for Cinderella uh-huh. from Fable Town with Love. Also, a science fiction writer. Yes. Author. Um, so I guess let's start at the beginning. What was your, because you know, obviously you're writing comics right now. Did you were you into comics as a kid? Oh my God, yeah. So I I've been uh, I've been going to the comic shop every Wednesday since Wednesday was on Thursday. So basically, starting around I guess since 1980, I've been at the comic shop every week. Uh, comics fanatic. I was like the, the kid with lots of like buttons on a vest, like getting like Joe Staten's signature or like getting to meet Steve Englehart or whatever. Okay. Uh, forever. And uh, all I ever really wanted to do was write comics. Uh, and I just couldn't figure out how to break in. And so I became a novelist by accident because, like, I can type. And it's uh, easier to sell short stories and novels than it is to break into comics. Okay. And, but you, I mean, you've been nominated for awards within fantasy. So you've yeah. d- you do alternate history. So yeah. it, obviously you can write well enough. It's just, like you said, it's easier to break in through a different way. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, but I, I think my affinity was all, my, my, my books and stories. Uh, many of them have like a real kind of like comic sensibility. Have you thought about trying to work with somebody to get one of them illustrated to see it like a different way of doing something? Like yeah. with the Hatter M series, I'm yeah. Some these, you know. It would be not. You know, the thing is, like, uh, part of it for me is that um, I feel like I'm always getting better, and so uh, like like as proud of the work I've done in novels as I am, and I like a lot of the characters. Like, I'd much rather do something new. Okay. You know, because I've got like, a, uh, so yes, I would, pro- I would very much, probably in the long term, I would do a comic with some of those characters. Okay, so, so a, a spinoff back out back. of the yeah. uh, something related. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, you were in a what a, I guess a collect a writers collective for a while with Bill Willingham and yeah. some others. Yeah. And so is that was that your entrance into this, uh, to this Fable Actually, Town? That, or? Yes, ultimately yes. So uh, uh, the, it was Clockwork Storybook, and we we started about. Uh, I guess like 13 years ago in Austin, uh, and it was just like people that had met the comic shop. And so like I met uh, Mark Finn worked at Austin Books and Comics in Austin, and he knew Willingham, and Willingham was wanting to put together uh, a, a writing group to do prose, to do, like because uh, like he as Bill describes it, he like he has been he's ruined his comics career at least twice, and he was kind of like in between comics careers. Um, and uh, a buddy Matt Sturgis, who's writing a bunch of stuff for DC now, was like an old college roommate of mine, and so I dragged him in. And uh, we spent a bunch of years like writing a bunch of stuff. We had a web webzine. We had re- a readership in the dozens. Um, but I- anyway, uh, we reached that point in the uh, in the VH1 behind the music special, right around minute 30, where everything goes bad. And uh, we didn't talk to each other for a couple of years. And then I went off and became a, a, a semi-successful science fiction novelist. And Willingham became Fables, Bill yeah. Willingham. And uh, right. and Sturgis started doing a lot of stuff. And uh, then we reconnected, and uh, just a couple years ago, uh, Bill just totally threw me a bone. I was about to have to go get a day job working at Kinko's, and uh, uh, I was talking to Bill, and he said, well, okay, you're writing a fill-in issue of Jack of Fables. And I said, oh, okay, I'll do that. So was this your first actual comic that you'd ever had to write out for a script? Well, I'd written a million scripts before and trying to break in for years. Okay. Like, so whenever, like... 1993 Wildstorm's doing a talent search. I'm sending things in okay. and just couldn't get any traction. So I'd done tons, but that was the first anybody saw. Okay. Yeah. And then the, the editor liked it um, uh, and it ended up getting getting uh, published in, in Jack Fables. And then that led to the Cinderella from Fable Town with Love. Okay. Uh, and then that led to uh, the book I'm doing with Mike Allred, Vertigo Now. Okay. Yeah. And I, I noticed uh, one thing that some people were pointing out is that this is the first, the Cinderella spinoff is the first book in the Fables universe that doesn't have Willingham's name anywhere yeah. on it. Yeah. Which I don't think Bill, Bill realized. So when Bill like oh. told me I could do this fill in, it was great. Um, and I don't think either of us processed that this would be the first Fables thing without his name on it. Um, and then Sturge just pointed it out to me one day, like at lunch, wow. like. You know, you realize that this is the first non-Bill thing. And I was like, I'm going to ruin it. Like, I'm totally about to destroy Bill's whole thing. Right. But uh, response has been great, it seems. Like, it yeah. really seems like, like just just going on sales numbers and not just to mention people talking about it. Is that it seems like people really like it. No, I mean, there's been the, 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 even the, the reviews and stuff have been, have been tremendous. And people, like, 
have emailed me or come up to me at cons, and it's, it's just immensely gratifying that people like it. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, you want to talk a little about the book you're doing with All Red right now? Sure. Um, it's called I Zombie. Uh, it, the first, it's an ongoing. Uh, the first issue comes out uh, May 5th. Uh, and it's about a uh, zombie girl detective. It's about like if Nancy Drew had to eat a brain once a month and then solve a mystery. Uh, and her best friend is a ghost girl. Uh, there's a wear terrier that's in love with her. The two rivals for her affection uh, are a sexy mummy and uh, a kick-ass like kung fu monster hunter guy. Um, so it's basically the same old, same old. It, uh, not, not really. Um, but yeah, the first issue comes out in May. It's a buck. It's, a, it's one of their dollar. It's got a Darwin Cook variant cover. So like at a dollar, you're losing money if you don't try it. Absolutely. I think. Yeah. No question. Yeah. And so, uh, and are you hoping this will, is, was this designed as a mini or an ongoing series? What are you hoping to? It was originally, it was originally it pitched as an ongoing, um, and it was originally designed as, as uh, uh, you, know, you know, Vertigo will periodically like revive old tr names right. with, with a completely new concept. I mean, that's where Sandman came from, uh, that's where Shade, the Changing Man essentially came from. Um, those and did pretty well. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Okay. Fairly well regarded, uh, and so just in a very kind of mercenary, calculated way, I was looking at like what more. What, what I'd turned in the last script to Cinderella, I'd need more work, and so uh, I'd got a list of the things that they were looking at trying to keep alive, and uh, I wrote like one paragraph pitches for each of them, and the one that that uh, uh, Shelley Bond, my editor, and Karen Berger really responded to was the pitch for Grave Digger, which was the the uh, 1970s DC war comic. So this this had nothing to do with that except for the title. Um, and it's about a, a girl who's a zombie who d has, gets a gut job as a grave digger so she can get bodies to eat so she doesn't have to hurt anybody. And uh, then uh, Shelly got Mike on board, all red, to do the art. And Mike said, you know, I love it, I think it's great, but, you know, I really don't want to do work for hire. And so Shelly called me up and said, can we change the name and make it create her own? And I, uh, luckily, oh, sure. I was in the car, and luckily I didn't swerve off the road like Toons is the cat. And I just said, yes, that, yes, you can do that. So do you, uh, do you embrace the creator owned a little more than doing a character that's already out there? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, because if nothing else, uh, being able to build a world essentially from scratch. Um, it, I, I've done I've done some like uh, franchise tie-in work and novels and stuff, and it's always a lot of fun to play in like universes that I grew up loving. Like I wrote a Star Trek novel, I wrote an X-Men novel, and it's fantastic. But at the same time, like when you're dealing with um, any kind of character or concept that's got like decades of continuity, it's always really kind of hard to find new stories to tell or new ways to tell stories. Or, and so uh, with a creator own thing, getting to start from scratch uh, is immensely liberating. Uh, and the fact that we, that Mike and I own it is just gravy. Yeah. And Vertigo's been supportive so far. Of, uh, to the, when you switched it over, they were, go, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it, it was the, it was their call, but yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so you've got this book coming out in May. Do you have any other projects? Do you want to, anything else, like I'm, I'm another doing, novel? I'm doing some work for uh, 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 Boom Studios, um, and it's been solicited. I don't think that they've discussed the plot yet, but I, I'm scripting uh, a prequel to Philip K. Dick's uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. Oh, okay. And I think the first one of those will come out sometime in the next couple of months, probably. Now, th will that be within a comic form, or are you doing yeah. that as a novel? Yeah, it's a comic, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, well, I mean, really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming out sure. today. Yeah, it's a pleasure.